Good evening, everybody. And welcome to the 2022 Champions for Justice event. A sign of a successful event is when people won't sit down. So as far as I'm concerned, this has already been a success. We're so pleased to see you here. My name is Gregory Bowman. I have the honor and privilege of serving as the dean of this fine law school. I have been here for two years. I've been on my laptop for two years. And it's so nice to see people in person. After two long years of the pandemic, I'm really excited to be here and finally have a real Champions for Justice event. <laughs> Champions for Justice is a premier, the premier, annual event for the Rhode Island legal community. It's an opportunity for friends to come together, for students to network, and to get to know leaders in the state's legal community. It's an opportunity for us at the law school to thank you our supporters, our sponsors. It's a chance for us to celebrate and support the excellent programs at the law school. And of course, it's an opportunity to celebrate this year's Champions for Justice. So thank you for being here this evening. And I wanna thank and acknowledge our lead sponsors for this evening's event. The law firm of Chisholm Chisholm and Kilpatrick Limited, the law firm of Jones Kelleher, LLP, and the law firm of Mandel Beauclair and Mandel Limited. Their generosity makes our law school success possible, and we appreciate their friendship and support. And I also want to extend our thanks and deep appreciation to our other event sponsors for this evening who are listed on the program and on our event website. Now, this year, Champions is a little bit different in that we are not doing it in the middle of the spring semester. We're doing it at the end of the semester. So some of our students could not be here with us this evening. They're taking finals. That, yeah, boo, boo Dean, it's the Dean's fault. Um, but for the students who are here, and there are students here, thank you for being with, with us tonight. You are the future of the legal profession, and we are proud of you. We are also joined this evening by other distinguished guests, and I want to extend a warm and grateful welcome to members of the federal and state judiciary elected officials, university trustees, members of the law school's board of directors, members of the Law Alumni Association board of directors, members of the university's board of trustees, honorary degree recipients, and our returning champions for justice whom we have honored in previous years. We really, really appreciate everyone being here this evening. And I also want to thank our university's provost, Dr. Margaret Everett, for being here with us tonight. Provost Everett, in case you have not met her, is a fantastic partner and supporter for our law school, our programs, our students. And I deeply appreciate you being here with us tonight, Margaret. Margaret, would you please come up and say a few words? Everyone, so wonderful to, as uh, Dean Bowman said, it's wonderful to welcome you. It's wonderful to be in person, uh, gathering as a group after a long few years. And I am particularly uh, delighted to be at my first in-person Champions for Justice event. Uh, it's really a pleasure, and uh, it's a pleasure to. Uh, thank you all for the support that you give to our wonderful law school and to our wonderful students and to the important work that I think we do every day. So thank you so much uh, for being here and for your support. 
Uh, President Mialis could not be here uh, this evening, and he sends his regrets. He is uh, on a long-planned work trip in Europe, building partnerships for the institution and re representing us abroad. Uh, President Mialis and I are both very committed to uh, those international connections for the university, um, but he does send his best regards and his thanks for your support for the law school uh, and our students and our programs. You know, uh, Dean Bauman, Greg, and I arrived uh, at the university on the very same day, July 1, 2020. What were, what were we thinking looking for jobs in the middle of a pandemic, Greg? I, I don't know, but uh, we got through it, and I think that kind of bonded us. And uh, Greg has been a wonderful partner to work with. And uh, I think we've gotten a lot of really exciting things going together uh, in connection with the university and the law school. We're working hard on expanding our pre-law advising, our three plus three programs. The law school has been a terrific partner in some of the institution-wide initiatives that we've been working on related to real estate and real estate development to the blue economy and coastal sustainability, the law school is a critical and vital partner in that work. And uh, I know that we're going to be a stronger university uh, by working together and with our law school. And our law school um, contributes so much to the reputation of the institution and to the important work we do. So uh, for that reason and many more, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you again for letting me attend this amazing event and for sharing the evening with you. Thank you so much. Margaret, thanks very much, and thanks again for being here. So during tonight's event, we have a silent live auction taking place. During last year's virtual event, uh, our virtual online Champions for Justice event, we used an app for the silent auction, which was really successful. So we're doing it again, right? What do they say? We have an app for that. So we have an app for that. Uh, and there are QR codes on your tables. Um, I encourage you to bid on available items. We have a lot of great things for you to bid on. So please take a look. Uh, and please place your bids before the auction closes at 8.30 tonight. You could be the lucky winner of exciting items like a one-month pass to park in the highly coveted Dean's parking spot. I can personally attest that parking in this parking spot will make you feel very special. So I encourage you to bid on this. And wherever she is, Jenna Hashway, I am looking at you. A dinner with four of our law school deans, Bruce Kogan, David Logan, Mike Wilnowski, and me, because one dean's not enough, we have four. Picnic baskets, wine baskets, and more. Many of our silent auction items tonight have been donated by our faculty and our staff and our alumni, and we're grateful to our corporate sponsors, Themis and Kaplan, for donating 21 bar prep pass, uh, packages for our students to bid on. They're worth $1,000 each. So get your phones out. So right now, the auction stands at having raised over $7,200. And every dollar we raise goes to support our students and our pro bono programs. So keep your bids coming. Thank you for your support. And so now. Dinner will be served. I hope you enjoy it. I do have one important note about dinner, which is that it is a scientifically proven fact that your dinner will taste better if you bid on silent auction items. All right? So trust the science. Get your phones out. Enjoy your dinner. Well, it seems like everybody's having a good time, and I'm glad you are, uh, and I hope you're bidding on silent auction items. So tonight's event is the premier public event for the legal profession in Rhode Island. And what started off a few years ago as a small auction at the law school has grown into a grand gala that raises funds for a variety of experiential programs at the law school 
including the Pro Bono Collaborative, the Alternative Spring Break Program, our legal clinics, our legal externships, and our public interest summer stipend program. And each year we aim to raise $100,000 or more to support these programs, and this year is no different. And this year we actually hope to increase that total to meet increasing demand. Your funding of these programs will give our students the opportunity to learn what it means, what it really means to be a lawyer, to be the only person standing between a client and disaster. The experiential programs that you support with your generosity will help our students learn that the legal profession is, in the very truest sense of the word, a service profession. These, these programs will help our students learn that being a lawyer is not just a job. Being a lawyer is a calling. The success of our pro bono experiential and clinical programs relies on your funding, but it also relies on people. The excellent work of my colleagues at the law school who serve our clinics, our externships, and our pro bono programs. And I am grateful for their excellent work every day. Would all of my colleagues at the law school who work to support our clinics and our externships and our pro bono programs please stand and be recognized? Please stand. Everybody stand. But wait, there's more. In addition to these excellent colleagues, we have many other hardworking, dedicated faculty at the law school and staff at the law school who make a difference in the lives of our students every day, who make their educations a wonderful experience inside and outside the classroom. So would all my other colleagues at the law school please stand and be recognized. And finally, I want to single out one of my colleagues for special recognition and appreciation this evening. This summer on June 30th, Margie Carancy will be retiring. After decades of loyal service to the law school, to our students, to our clinics, and to their clients. So Margie, would you please stand so we can show you some love? We all hope to live lives of service, and we all hope to make the world a better place with what we do. And Margie, you have most certainly done that, so thank you for everything you've done. So I've spoken this evening about support for our programs at the law school. And at this time, I want to acknowledge a truly transformational gift that we received earlier this year from Mark Mandel and his family. It is a gift of a quarter million dollars. And with, yes. And with the help from others, including people in this room, we have an opportunity to increase the size of this gift to a total of $750,000. This state, Rhode Island, is a state that is rich with history that spans the centuries with multicultural influences and a founding charter that is based on tolerance and liberty. And in today's long overdue era of national reckoning over race, Roger Williams University School of Law has the opportunity to lead the way, both regionally and nationally, in addressing the impact of race and racism in the law and the legal profession. We have an opportunity in our work to acknowledge past wrongs and to build a stronger and better future for our country that is filled with justice for all. And we have an opportunity to diversify the bar, to make our profession look more like the public we serve. Our law school is proud to be a leader in this work. We're one of the first law schools to establish a required course 
on race and the foundations of American law. Starting this year, all of our students Starting this year, all of our students will be required to take this course. And we believe very firmly that teaching our law students about race and the foundations of American law is essential for their future success as lawyers and leaders in our society. And this kind of thing cannot happen without financial support. And so tonight, I want to celebrate the transformational gift from Mark and his family uh, to support scholarships an endowed fund to support scholarships for students of color and students who wish to pursue a career in public interest law. Now everyone in this room knows Mark, and they know his commitment to social justice. He's a former chair of the law school's board of directors. He's a former member of the university's board of trustees. His family, his wife Yvette Beauclair and their son Zach Mandel, who serves on our board of directors right now, have made this gift to our law school to help and to make the law school and the bar and the state and society better. So here's how you can help. In addition to the foundational quarter million dollar gift, Mark and his family have pledged to match matching gifts up to another $250,000. On your table, there's a tent card, and one side has the auction QR code. On the other is the QR code to donate to this fund. I am proud to say I was the first person to pledge to match, to be a matching donor to this fund, and I invite you to join me this evening. So thank you, Mark, Yvette, Zach. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your support for our law school, and thank you for support for our students. Okay, so now is what we've been waiting for. The presentation of this year's three Champions for Justice honorees. And to start us off, I am pleased to welcome to the podium my colleague Andy Horowitz, who serves as the law school's Dean of Experiential Education. Dean Horowitz will present our 2022 Alumni Public Interest Champion. Andy. It is my great honor to introduce to you my former student, my colleague, my friend, Aiken Adepoju, the recipient of this year's Alumni Public Interest Champion Award. Aiken graduated cum laude from Roger Williams University School of Law in 2007. He was a true presence as a law student, and anyone who encountered him back then knew that great things were to come. He was one of those students who was everywhere, doing everything. Just to name a few, he participated in the National Moot Court Competition, in the National Trial Team, and in street law. As a student in my criminal defense clinic, he was a star. His clients knew how lucky they were to have him, and for me, he was just a complete joy to work with. After graduating from law school, Aiken worked with the Fair Trial Initiative in North Carolina, focusing on capital trial cases. From there, he joined the Federal Public Defender's Office, where he has worked as an assistant federal public defender for the past 14 years, in the District of Delaware and in the Western District of Pennsylvania. He has served as lead trial attorney in the Capital Habeas Unit. He's also been an adjunct professor of law at Delaware Law School and the University of the District of Columbia School of Law. And somewhere along the way, he earned an LLM degree from Temple University School of Law. 
Perhaps most importantly for us at the law school, he has remained deeply connected to Roger Williams University. For any number of years now, he has hosted students during our incredibly popular and successful Alternative Spring Break program, teaching and inspiring generations of lawyers yet to come. He is always willing to mentor our students. Anyone who expresses interest in the criminal defense work, the federal public defender's office, death penalty work, he will take under his wing, spending hours of time on the phone with them, connecting them to his extensive network. He simply never says no. He's the 2012 recipient of our Feinstein Institute for Legal Service Public Interest Alumni Award, and in 2021, he was awarded the Federal Defender Service's Gideon's Trumpet Award in recognition of his, quote, exceptional work and outstanding service to the Federal Defender Program and Public Defense. Please join me in welcome and in celebrating Aiken Adepoju. Thank you all so very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andy, for that really wonderful introduction. And um, I really want to let you all know how excited I'm here to be with you all tonight. And of course, you know I'm telling the truth because I spend most of my days in jails and traveling around different places. Um, so being in the room, with people committed to public service, who are funding public service, who care about it, about serving other people, and who are really well dressed and have really lovely conversations. So this is really a treat for me and I want to thank all of you. I also certainly want to thank um, and acknowledge the presence of all the dignitaries in the room. Um, certainly our state judges, our federal judges, including Judge Thompson who's getting honored here tonight. Um, and um, certainly all of you, particularly also, coming in here tonight, seeing all the law students, all the hours you're all putting in into changing people's lives, really outstanding. So thank you for your work and thank you for your service. Um, I'm here tonight um, with my, um, well, I have a large family, but luckily for you all, I didn't bring all of them here. Um, so, but a representative, and they couldn't have chosen a better representative, and that's my brother, Yinka Adepoju, who's here tonight. Um, <laughs> simply put, he has been my rock, he's been there my whole life. Um, doing this work, um, whether it's death penalty work and even non-capital work, it is emotionally exhausting. Um, the hours are long, um, but um, he's been here with me at every turn, and I'm very grateful um, that he's here tonight. And of course, you know, before I came up tonight, I hadn't realized that I had to talk to you all, particularly for so long. I was going to come up and say, thank you, Andy. So I heard I have to talk a little bit. So of course, as I'm whispering to him there, he says, listen, of course you got to talk for a little bit, but get up there, don't try to be charming or funny, just be yourself. So, so, so there you have it. Um, but, but nonetheless, I'll try to keep my remarks very brief this evening, and I promise you, Andy, I'm gonna take less than an hour, okay? Um, I really wanna focus my just brief remarks on three things. The first is to say thanks. The second is to talk about public defense and public interest work. And the third is about love. <laughs> so the first is to thank you and thank this community, Roger Williams School of Law, and really the Rhode Island legal community for its commitment to public interest work, and really at this moment in our country's history to recognize someone doing public defense work and how important it is to our country and to justice, not just social justice, racial justice, but simply justice period. So to do that in this moment in this country's history, I am very much obliged to you all for making that happen.
You know, when um, Gene Bowman called me and told me that um, I was getting this award, this is entirely true. I told him, surely this must be a, an administrative error. <laughs> and he said, hey, you know, it's not, you know. Um, you know, so we, we, we talked about it for a while, and towards the end of the conversation, I let him know, you can change your mind at any time. Um, it, but, but I'm very grateful for him that that, 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 that has not happened. Um, thanking the school, I also want to really thank the people this community has really brought into my life. Because my life has been enriched so much by attending the university. Um, I have not had a chance to see if he's here tonight, but one of the first people I met in this school um, was the director of admissions then, and I think it still is, is Michael Boylan. Yeah. Um, Michael was the one that convinced me to come to Roger Williams, and I have to say he has done a much better job since. I have seen the quality of the students that are coming through Roger Williams. They come spend time in my office, they help me look smart, they cover my incompetence. This is why I keep having them come back every year. Um, they're so eager to work. And, and at, at one point, I talked to Lori Barron, who's wonderful, and I said, Lori, like, I need two L's, mainly because they know more law and they can do my work for me. Um, you know, but Lori says, nah, Aiken, we got one L's, and the one L's would come, and they would still do my work for me, and they would do it very well. So I know for a fact today, I wouldn't be allowed to be attending Roger Williams because the caliber of the students here are truly wonderful. Um, so thank you all um, for really exposing me to the community of people that I've met. Not only are the students that are coming after me wonderful, but the people that I've met here when, when I was a student here have really changed my life. Um, seated at the table I am at tonight is Christine Biscotti. She was my moot court partner, and we're still friends till today. Um, she won the moot court that year, and I say she because she really did all the work. Um, and she's outstanding. And one of the things I'll tell you about the relationships that you form in this community is that um, Christine um, is so many wonderful things, and she's a mother. When Christine and her children, she, um, after she's had them, you know this baby swaddle that she has, um, she kept them even though her children are now like five or six, like the youngest one. And when I had my daughter, um, Christine sent me this package in the mail. And I get a package in the mail, and it's from the United States Postal System, and it, and it has like a $35 postage stamp on it. And I opened it, and it's this swaddle in it. And I'm like, well, you could have sent me over to Amazon for like 10 bucks. So I called Christine, and she told me, I've been keeping this swaddle for my daughter for such a long time, and I couldn't find a better person to give than you. So thank you so much, Christine. And then, of course, there's just so many wonderful people here, like Wayona Nelson Davis, who was my classmate, and now she's the direct executive director over at the Economic Progress Institute. Um, yes, yes, please. So, so I am Nigerian, and Wayona is Liberian. So obviously, I look down on her. <laughs> but um, one thing that I know about Wayona being a wonderful person, I learned such a great deal from her. The last time I was in Rhode Island, um, I landed at the airport, and she said, Aiken, you're not going anywhere else first. You better come to my house. We're spending time. I went over to her house. She cooked a meal. We spent the afternoon together. That has mattered so much to my heart, and um, you know, I can't thank you enough. One of the things that I you know, think about Wayona is the, in the great word of, um, for those who, of you like, that like plays, um, I think it was Alexander Hamilton in his famous words to Marquis de Lafayette, he said, immigrants, we get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this, this really is a wonderful community, um, and so I really want to say a big massive thank you. The other part that I want to talk about, which is the part about public interest work, it really changes your life, it makes you smarter, it makes you better, it makes you more empathetic, it makes you understand the human condition. Now, people ask me, like, Aiken, how did you get into this line of work?
I'd love to tell him it was Andy's clinic, which was fantastic. And by the way, Andy, I mean, thank you so much for all the things that you did um, in making me such a, um, at least a good advocate. Um, you set me up very well, and I, can't say, and I can't say thank you enough. But we also know the person who ran the clinic, and that's Margie. Um, so Margie, thank you again for all your years of service. So people always ask me, how did you get into this line of work? How do you know you do death penalty work, you do these other kinds of work, how did you get into it? And the trick is, for the law students here, who we become soon alums, or for some of you, is that you need to find a job that no one wants, <laughs> that is difficult, that the pay is low. In that way, there won't be that many competition. And then you can get in that space and you can do some amazing things. Um, because that's what I did. <laughs> um, as Andy said, um, I wanted to do really criminal defense work. And also, if you wanted to do capital work, you can't do that in New England. You gotta go down south. You gotta go where the issues are. You gotta get it proximate. You gotta get yourself in that community and do the labor. So I went down there and I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about people who live at the margins of society about how the law treats them, right? We learn about the theories of law, but then you see that we don't live, you know, you know, we don't live theories, we live realities. We know the impact of decisions, how it impacts people's lives, how it changes people's lives. I learned that in Andy's clinic, learning about driving while licenses revoked, about how, cha how that changes someone's life. In just a week, if they're in custody for just a week, it changes whether they lose their job. Sometimes it changes whether they can have the rights to custody of their children. So that means we got to get in to do the work immediately, as fast as we can, and as best as we can. So that's how I got into this line of work. And for those who are doing all kinds of different work in public interest, please continue to do it. You are changing lives. It is important. And I'm glad that this school encourages it. This community supports it both in their action, in their deed, and they put their money on the line, and that is really tremendous work. So again, thank you for that. Now finally, I want to talk about love, and you guys wonder, what is, what's that about? Well, of course I'm in love, all right? Um, <laughs> someone whistled back there. Um, so Dr. Martin Luther King, just in his 39 years alive, he motivated us by his words and he inspired us by his actions. The way he defined love is a steadfast commitment to the well-being of others. This community, and I encourage everyone in the room, when you leave tonight, ask yourself, what am I doing to commit myself to the well-being of others. Not everyone can do public defense work. Not everyone can do economic impact work. But whatever it is that you do, the way you can show love is to support it, whether you join organizations, you serve on boards, um, you dedicate your time, and finances to support the work. It makes a great deal of difference. It changes humans' lives. Um, when I represent clients, when I talk to family members, whatever support that all of us here and all the privilege that we have, let's use it to support and encourage people. I finally want to close on mentioning something. Just a week ago, I read way more opinions than I should ever admit in public. I really do. And I was reading an opinion, and I tend to read circuit opinions, um, United States circuit opinions, and I came across the first circuit opinion that just came out, I think, maybe less than two weeks ago. And it was a case about, and of course I had to do something in my realm, and it was a capital case. Um, I'm sorry, it was a habeas case in which a man had been, uh, he had been charged, he had gone to trial. And while he was at trial, we called the, the, the jury selection of the veneer that's the SAT word, and the people were there, and there was only one black person in that entire veneer. That's not unusual in my line of work when we talk about justice. 
the kinds of justice that people live and get in this country. And yet, that one black person was excluded from service. Not for cause, not because he says, oh, I can't convict someone, not for any other reason, because none was given. It was just a preemptory strike. And the reason that the government came after there was some challenge was because he had an 11th grade education. Of course, all the white people on the jury, in that panel, there were people who had a 12th grade education. I don't particularly know what that one has to do with judgment of the other. Now, I'd love to tell you that the conviction was a vacated or reversed and all that, it wasn't. But the case goes to court, um, he was convicted, and now it's on habeas before the United States Court of Appeals for the First Circuit. And in that decision, because of several pro procedural hoops that lawyers have to jump through, the, the conviction was um, affirmed. But there was a concurrence in that decision. One judge stood up and said, what happened here was concerning. What happened here is disturbing. That judge was Judge Thompson. The work we do, anytime we call out wrong, that's a good thing because we leave the next chapter open so that we can advance justice for everyone. Again, this community has given me so many wonderful people, including the wonderful Professor Allen, whom I had the privilege of working with in the trenches before she joined the bar here. I have had so many law students come to me, tell me, oh, do you know Professor Allen? I'm like, yes, I know Professor Allen. In fact, she and I worked together. We tried cases together. We went to jails together. And they say, really, you breathe the same air as her? And I said, yes, yes. So yes, that's my flex. I know Professor Allen. <laughs> um, and finally, um, one last person I would like to introduce you all to is because I've gotten so much from this community it is a friend of mine who's now solidly in this community, the next chief federal defender for the districts of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire. And yes, that's one person. That's Kiana Givens. So when I say thank you all for all that you do, Stay committed to public interest work, support it in every way that you can, and because this community is so invested and committed to the well-being of others, I thank you, I appreciate you, and yes, I love you. Have a good night. Thank you, Andy, and thank you, Aiken. That was really wonderful. And I love you, too. Your work, Aiken, is making a difference in this world. Um, we're honored to be, having, to be a part of your ongoing journey and your life story seeking justice. So now I'm pleased to welcome to the podium my colleague, uh, Professor Eliza Vorenberg, who will present our award for the 2022 Community Partner Champion for Justice. Whoa. Hi, everybody. <laughs> the, the lights are bright. Um, I am delighted to present our next award, the Ch Community Partner Champion Award to Rhode Island Legal Services. Please join me in welcoming Robert Barge, RILS Executive Director, and Victoria Almeida, Chair of the RILS Board, to accept this award on behalf of Rhode Island Legal Services. 
I can't see anything, but I imagine you're on your, oh, hi. We chose Rhode Island Legal Services for this award because of the extraordinary work they do in the community and because of the enduring lessons they teach our students. We are especially proud of the incredible leadership Rhode Island Legal Services has shown this past year, working with RWU Law and the Rhode Island Center for Justice to bring the eviction help desk to Providence and Kent counties. To date, over 400 tenants have received legal assistance through the Help Desk initiative. Shout out to Steve, Brian, Maria, Owen, Troy, and David. Where's Janet? We'd also like to recognize Janet Gilligan, the Deputy Director of RILS. We are so grateful to Janet. There she is. And wish that she would stay forever, but we congratulate her on her much deserved earned retirement later this year. For those of you who don't know, RILS is the only LSC funded legal services organization in the state. And with Robert Barge at the helm, RILS has led countless initiatives to increase access to justice in Rhode Island. RILS is also one of the largest employers of RWU Law graduates and provides extensive experiential education opportunities, internships, externships, pro bono opportunities for our law students. The lessons that RILS teaches our students are the ones that cannot be taught in the classroom, and they teach them by example. At RILS, our students learn that indigent clients deserve an advocate who treats them with respect, dignity, and humility, no matter what. That truly being there for a client at what may be the lowest point in that person's life requires compassion, patience, and an ability to listen. And that civil legal services work requires hard work and collaboration, having each other's backs, working together. I wish we had time to hear the testimonials of the many students who learned from RILS attorneys, but here is one quote that demonstrates the impact RILS has had on our students. This quote is from a student who spent a semester at RILS as an extern. Quote, there truly is no place like RILS. My time there made me not only a better law student and future attorney, but a better person. I saw the world through a completely different lens. The attorneys at RILS instantly made me feel like family. They held my hand when I needed it, but quickly empowered me to work on projects on my own. When I look back on my law school career, my time at RILS stands out. The staff at RILS are strong, witty, brilliant, and most of all, they truly care about helping those who cannot help themselves. That's what this profession is truly about." End quote. We are thrilled to present RILS with the Community Partner Champion Award. Will everyone in the audience who is or has been an attorney with RILS or spent time there as a student, intern, extern, ASB, please stand while I present RILS with the Community Partner Champion Award. Pleasure to be here uh, on behalf of the Board of Directors of RILS. I always say that RILS and my work with RILS and this wonderful staff, our wonderful board, reminds me of why I became a lawyer in the first place. The evils that we see in the world today are not new poverty, discrimination, 
war. But as Einstein told us, the evil doers are not to blame. It's the people who allow them to proceed. So for everything that we do in your name and in the name of our clients, uh, we do to better the clients we serve and the world in which we find ourselves. Uh, it's an honor to be here today and th I'd like to thank Roger Williams for the honor and the privilege to be of service. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Eliza, for those wonderful words about Rhode Island Legal Services. There's no doubt that since its inception, the program has just been an outstanding program to deliver legal services to our low-income population, victims of domestic violence, and our elderly. I'd have to say, though, that a great extent is because of the outstanding staff the outstanding lawyers, paralegals, and support staff that we have working and that have worked at Rhode Island Legal Services. So I appreciate that you gave yourselves a big hand, but I do want to recognize the current staff. Would you please stand? Thank you. You know, when I walked in the door on of Rhode Island Legal Services on February 5th, 1979. I know. <laughs> there was an outstanding staff even then. And I, to give an example, I walked down the stairs on 77 Doran Street to disturb one of our outstanding lawyers in family law, Judge Thompson. <laughs> and then later I heard from her husband, Robert, I understand that my wife, my girlfriend, and wife at the time couldn't get her job done because you were talking to her too much. <laughs> upstairs was Judge Best, Barry Best, was working upstairs in public benefits. Dave Riley, Alden Harrington, just an outstanding group. But the two people who had the greatest impact on me personally and allowed me to uh, be as successful is Janet Gilligan and Bob Sable. Now, I, I just want them to come up here just for a moment. I'm not going to extend this with any large speeches, but I want you to join me because you've been significant as far as the delivery of services for the last 47 years for Bob and the last 30 years as a deputy director and managing attorney. Janet, up here. Bob. Bob Sable. You might as well come up here. I'm not going to leave until you come. Bob, Janet. I'm up here. I'm bad. I know I'm bad. <laughs> These two people are some of the keys to my success. Now, we've got outstanding lawyers that are ready to go to when they depart, but Janet has just been wonderful. She's going to be leaving on July 22nd of this year, and Bob Sable's going to be leaving May 31st. I'm just going to let them say just a couple of words. Janet. Thank you. Um, I did not expect this. I'm happy to say, though, that this night is a wonderful experience because it involves two of my favorite institutions in the state of Rhode Island, Rhode Island Legal Services, of course, is my first love, my first legal job. But the law school has allowed me, by being an adjunct professor on and off, a wonderful opportunity to meet so many students and to keep young at heart, driven by their ambition, their enthusiasm, and their love for justice. So it's been a wonderful experience, and thank you very much. Bob. Also, was not expecting this. Um, well, I've been a legal services attorney for over 40 years. I've loved it. It's been one of the great things about being a legal services attorney 
you're on the right side of every case. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all again, and that's going to conclude our presentation. Okay, so thank you, Eliza. Thank you, Victoria and Robert. The work of Rhode Island Legal Services has made a difference for thousands of Rhode Islanders throughout the years. And yes, you're always on the right side of the case. You've made a big difference in the state. All right, so now, to present our last honoree, our 2022 Champion for Justice, I am pleased to welcome Roger Williams University School of Law alum, Judge Angeline Cooper, to the podium. Good evening. It is such a joy to be in your company here tonight. This is a very special occasion for me because I have the immense honor and privilege to introduce to you one of my sheroes and a woman I have so much admiration, respect, and love for, our 2022 Champion for Justice, Judge Rogery Thompson. It is extremely difficult to even know where to begin when introducing someone with the talent, experience, and legacy of Judge Thompson. Not to mention, that Dean Bowman has very politely informed me that I should keep my remarks to under three minutes. <laughs> so there's also that. For those who want to learn more about JT, as I affectionately call her, I encourage you to do a simple Google search, check out her profile on the First Circuit Court of Appeals website, and you can even find her on YouTube. What I want to do with my time with you instead is share with you what JT means to me. Simply put, it is impossible to discuss my journey as an attorney, including my time in law school, without mentioning JT. She has been a constant presence, offering resourcefulness, support, love, and encouragement for the past 15 years. She's been by my side through the good, the bad, and the ugly, both personally and professionally, through tears of laughter and tears of sorrow. Words alone cannot adequately describe how much she means to me and how grateful I am for all that she's done and been 
for me and my family. I love you, JT. <laughs> Law school and legal community, family and friends, please join me in welcoming to the stage a truly phenomenal woman, my Rhode Island mom, and our 2022 champion for justice, the Honorable Judge Rajri Thompson. Thank you, everyone. I am uh, truly honored to be here with you this evening and am touched that you have made me the champion of the year. Although, Dean Bowman, I would have stayed a trustee if, even if you didn't do this, but, but, <laughs> but thank you. Um, love, I think, is a good place to start, and thank you so much for someone that I, too, care so much about who I met 15 years ago, who's been part of my heart. I wanna, th this truly is disadvantageous because I can't see any of you. The, all, I see, all I can see is the light. And so if we're gonna start with love, then I'm just gonna have to assume that you're picking up what I'm trying to project to you and that I'm picking up what you're projecting back to me because this is truly a love fest. When we came in this, evening, I have not seen so many people that I haven't seen in such a long time, and it just filled my heart. You know, it's bad enough that we're trapped, uh, you know, in, in, in these offices, and, and I don't get a chance to see attorneys except in court anymore. So it was really wonderful seeing so many people. But I, I need to make sure that everyone knows that people who I have loved my family is here with me. My, my, child, my three children raises Sarah, Will, whose girlfriend, Leah, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, Judge Clifton and Audrey Clifton. Friends, and doing this job and being in close proximity to so few people, there are other people who also become my family. And, and I refer to my law clerks as my other set of children, my other children, Angie being one. And I saw a lot of them here today, and I would just ask all of you who was ever one of my law clerks, federal and state, because I saw a bunch of state court clerks here uh, this evening too. Could you please stand? And there's uh, one clerk who will be starting in September. Jonathan, where are you? Stand up so everybody can know that you're going to be one of the children. <laughs> and in addition to uh, my law clerks, uh, I saw a bunch of interns who have been with me. Could, could those interns who are here please stand up? And so in these people who I become so close to, all I can say is that, you know, I, I hope that I enrich your life as much as you enrich mine, because it is truly an honor to have worked with you and to continue working with you. And of course, I started out at legal services. Vicki and I were laughing about, uh, we took the bar together. And in 1976, when 
Rhode Island was celebrating the uh, 200th bicentennial. We were stuck on July 6th, not at the Tall Ships Festival, not at the parades, not at any of the festivities that were going on all over the state of Rhode Island. She and I were hunkered down studying for the bar. <laughs> and, and Robert, you know, you, we pressured you to come to uh, legal services from California, so it was one of the best things that we ever did for, uh, uh, for the state of Rhode Island. <laughs> I mean, many of you know that I'm in the process of trying to transition, meaning I'm trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> I'm uh, moving from one job that I have loved doing for the uh, past 11 years, and I thought that I would be done by uh, December 31st. But as I tell everyone, the system was moving slowly, and at one point, uh, rather than going on December 31, it, it, be, it became necessary to reconsider that and make a decision not to go until it, it was clear to me when my successor was going to be nominated. So shout out for uh, Laura Montalcavo. I don't know if she's here tonight. She's been nominated to replace me. But we're, we're so proud of her, and we wish her the best as she goes through her confirmation process. But one other reason I decided to stay is because some important business was coming up in the court. And it's a surprise to me tonight because someone who was part of a decision, she doesn't know this, but as part of a decision not to go immediately was that, once again, there was important business coming up, such as the selection of the public defender for Rhode Island, <laughs> Massachusetts, <laughs> and New Hampshire. <laughs> and, and I didn't know that she was going to be here this evening, but it was clear to me that, you know, to the extent that I have a unique voice on the court, I thought I'd better see this through to make sure that uh, we got a good candidate. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. And my, my brother-in-law reminded me that I need to make sure that I understand the notice of brevity. So if, so, so if you don't mind, I, I'm just, I'm just going to tell one more, more, one more story. So, so tonight, in, in addition to uh, paying tribute to, to people that I know, people that I've just known for years and worked with. And thanks, Mark. I used to hang out with Mark Mandel when we were much younger people, right, Mark? And thank you for your gift to the law school. But I, but, but in addition to Kiana, who I'm, I'm going to meet you before you leave the building, OK? I've only interviewed her remotely, so that's as far as it, it goes. I also got a chance to meet a law student tonight who went viral, Brooklyn. Where are you, Brooklyn? And when I, when I saw, I got a call and they said, you gotta, you gotta take a look at this video. And when I saw the video, I just said to myself, oh Lord, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to move on and like I said, figure out what I wanna be when I grow up. And, and at a time like this, you tend to reflect back about some of the things that you've gone through. And I thought back to one day in 1985, and during that particular historical period, there was a movement going on in Philadelphia. And there were some black activists who were organizing, but they mostly were, you know, they, they were sort of counter, counterculture folks. I mean, they were, they were not into eating meat, they were into communal living. They were armed, they, they were exercising their Second Amendment rights, but they weren't violent. But the, but the community perceived them as such. 
And nightly on the news during this one period of time, there was a great deal of uh, press focus on this group. And there were pictures of these black you know, men and women and children who were sort of you know, dressed very casually. But, you know, we all had the big afros back then, and they had the big afros. And so this was night after night. And during that period of time, one day, I had been practicing law now for some years, and I assumed everyone, you know, knew a whole bunch of people. But I went to court that day, and I thought I was looking quite well. I mean, I was dressed in a, a I mean, I still remembered, I was dressed in a, a white three-piece suit. I looked sort of like John Lennon on the cover of Abbey Road. <laughs> I, was, I was clean, big afro. I had a leather backpack that I kept all of my uh, paperwork in. And as I was entering the courthouse, the sheriff stopped me and pulled me aside. And this was before metal detectors. And he actually said, I have to do a pat-down search of you. He did a pat-down search, and I wasn't going to, you know, he's the sheriff, I wanted to get in the courthouse. And then he asked to open my briefcase, my knapsack, and I wasn't going to say no to that either. When he opened the knapsack, he saw all of these court files in there, and he looked at me, and he looked down at the files, and he looked back up, and he said, are you an attorney? And I said, yes. He said, well, why didn't you tell me that? I said, well, why didn't you ask me that in the first place? <laughs> and so when I saw that Brooklyn, all of these years later, was, was going through a similar ordeal, I just said, well, the more things change, you know, the more they remain the same. And it means that we have to just keep struggling and fighting. Of Of course, my, Ro my Rhode Island twist, I mean, because even though I went home so upset that day and, and you know, moaning to my sweet husband who is here with me in, in spirit tonight, I, I told him the end of the story, which was that the sheriff was so embarrassed. And this is the Rhode Island way. He went and talked to the judge before court started, and he made sure that my case got called first. <laughs> So folks, um, once again, thank you, thank you so much for honoring me in this fashion. And I, th I, I wrote this down because I came across this the other day and I thought this would be a great way to end my remarks. You know, quoting uh, Justice Thurgood Marshall, and he once said, when you see wrong or inequality or injustice, speak out because this is your country. This is your democracy. Make it, protect it, pass it on. That is what I have tried to do during my 46 year career in law. And all I can ask is that you take up the mantle and carry on. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Judge Cooper, Judge Thompson. That was really, really wonderful. And to make a difference in your life like that is, uh, is moving. So, um, we find ourselves 
near the end of the program now, uh, at the end of another successful Champions for Justice program. I am grateful that you shared the evening with us. I'm happy to report that our current net uh, is over $100,000. And the law school is getting better every year, right? It's an exciting time. We've weathered the pandemic. We have strong support. Um, and we have emerged from the pandemic stronger than ever before. And a lot of that is due to the support from all of you in this room tonight. So thank you. One final message from me before we watch a lovely video that Judge Cooper has put together, a montage of congratulations to uh, Judge Thompson that we're going to show during dessert. Uh, which I've watched and is really quite wonderful. But I want you to remember this. This is my parting message. If you are a graduate of our law school, we're your law school. And if you're not a graduate of our law school, we're your law school. We are Rhode Island's law school. And we succeed together with you, the bar, the bench, our friends and supporters, right? We will continue to train the lawyers and leaders of the future with your help. And we will succeed with you and because of you. I've been a lawyer for 28 years now. That's one year less than this law school has been in existence, right? So I've been around the block enough times to know that this law school is different. It is radically different. When we live up to our values, we make a difference, and we make that difference with you. One student, one class, one clinic, one client at a time. So thank you very much for being here this evening. Dessert will now be served, and uh, please stay and watch this lovely video montage. Thank you so much for being here this evening. Hi, Roger. It's your cousins, Pam and Rudy. We can't be more proud of you, and we congratulate you. Um, we hope to see you soon. Congratulations. Congratulations, Auntie Raj. We are so proud of you. Um, you're getting this award for being the champion of justice, but we know that you're the champion of many more things. I can't wait to spend the summer treating vegetables with you and watching Willie Ann grow up. Congratulations, we love you. Hi, Auntie, it's Michael, uh, one of your nephews, and I wanted to congratulate you on being the recipient for the 2022 Champion for Justice Award. Um, you have been such an inspiration to uh, the entire family, including all of your children, and um, somebody who we are constantly proud of and can't stop bragging about. So congratulations again on your award. We love you. Hey, Raj, you're truly a champion of justice from your time in private practice with legal services through your time as a state court um, judge where you ensured that everyone that came before you was treated with dignity and respect. And now your time on the Court of Appeals where you are a leader for equality and diversity and the rule of law. Well-earned congratulations today to our true champion for justice. Judge Thompson, I'm sorry I can't be with you to celebrate the honor you're receiving, but please know that I believe you are not only deserving of the title Champion of Justice, but also the title Great Friend to the Law School and to its students. You have been a wonderful, inspirational asset to all of us at Roger Williams, and congratulations on this wonderful honor. When I think of Judge Thompson, I think, of course, of a pioneering woman of color in the legal profession in Rhode Island, and how challenging it must have been for her to make her way to the top of that profession. But what I appreciate most about her is the commitment she's made to opening doors for those who will follow her. She has mentored so many law clerks and externs and interns and has built a beautiful community of younger lawyers who are poised because of her leadership to go wherever their talents can take them. Hers will be the shoulders that generations to follow will stand on. Hey Judge, I'm so happy to be here tonight honoring one of my favorite people. I am so happy that all those years ago, Carol thought we'd be a good match together. And... Hi. 
Love you. Bye. Hey, Judge. Your amazing legal talents are obvious to anyone who's ever read your opinions, but it's your ability to always see the good in everything and everyone, even when others can't, that keeps me in awe of you every day. You're the bestest. Hi, Judge. Congratulations on this honor and best wishes from Oregon. You've been a role model to me both as a person and as a professional doing my best to work in the public interest. I miss you. Hi, Hi JT. JT. Congratulations on being this year's champion for justice. We love you. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations on this wonderful award, Judge Thompson. You have changed the lives of so many law students and attorneys simply by opening doors for them. We are all so lucky to be blessed to be part of your extended family. Congratulations, Judge Thompson. You taught me so much during my time in your chambers. You taught me about writing and most importantly, about justice. And the best part is I get to share those lessons with my students every year. Thank you. Hi, Judge. As Roger Williams alum, we are particularly excited that you are being honored tonight as a champion for justice. It is a privilege to be a part of your chamber's team where we get to witness every day how hard you work and how devoted you are to rendering justice in every case that comes to your desk, or rather since the pandemic hit to your dining room table. <laughs> Congratulations, Congratulations, Judge. Hi, Judge. Congratulations on this very well-deserved honor. My favorite part about clerking for you was witnessing your commitment to giving people access to justice. I saw that in your unique writing style, helping the litigants themselves understand what the court has decided, to witnessing you standing up for your position and being unafraid to push back. I really enjoyed fighting the good fight with you. At the end of my clerkship, you wrote, hopefully you learned here that seeking justice should always be the glint which sparkles in your eyes. Thank you, Judge, for setting the example of what that looks like and for giving me a chance to learn from you. Congratulations. Congratulations, Judge Thompson. I will forever be grateful to you for teaching me the importance of approaching the law with compassion, precision, and humanity. Judge Thompson, you are an inspiration to me. Like Judge Savage explained in her 2014 profile of you, Throughout your judicial tenure, you have not forgotten the people whose cases come before you. I aim to live up to your example every day. Congratulations, Judge Thompson, on your career and this much deserved award. When I was appointed to the district court bench in 2019, you gave me a set of Rhode Island state pens for my robe. To this day, I wear them as a symbol and beacon of excellence that you helped establish. Thank you again and congratulations. Judge Thompson, in addition to your brilliance, your courage, your compassion, and your quick wit, you have inspired a generation of legal professionals that extends far beyond the borders of the ocean state. You have taught me the power of serving with authenticity and with humility. And for that, I am forever thankful. Congratulations. Judge Thompson, thank you for paving the way for lawyers and judges that are just like myself. I'm aware of all your contributions. I followed you for many steps of the way, and I've been a fan uh, for quite some time. I appreciate you. Thanks for everything. There are so many great things to appreciate about Judge Thompson, but one of the things that I appreciate the most is how much time and effort she puts into mentoring young lawyers and law students like myself who one day hope to be as great of a lawyer and as great of a person as she is. Your advice and mentorship have meant the world to me and they brought me to where I am in both my personal life and in my professional career. I've always tried to model my practice after your example, especially the respect that you showed to everyone that ever entered your courtroom. Congratulations on this much deserved award. Good, you taught me so much in a year about collegiality, justice, and how to craft a good one-line zinger. Uh, congratulations. Um, and I miss you and I hope we'll see each other soon. Hello, Judge. Congratulations on this incredible honor. You are my personal hero, as I'm sure you are for many of the people who have had the honor to know you or know of you. Thank you for everything you've done to make us all better jurists and human beings. I miss you dearly um, and sending this with all my love. 
Judge, you have taught me that every story matters, including my own. You've given me the confidence to navigate systems by learning about the systems instead of being intimidated by the systems. And you have also shown me that you can be an amazing professional and an amazing mom, that those two things are not mutually exclusive. And as a new mom myself, I am drawing inspiration from that every day. So thank you and congratulations. Hi, Judge Thompson. James over here. I couldn't think of a better person to be honored for the Champions for Justice event at Roger Williams. Thank you for everything you do for justice and for helping all of us and your former clerks. There was a young woman from South Carolina who came to Rhode Island because it's finer. There she married a bill and say what you will, we're just happy she became a long timer. From all your many friends and former colleagues in the Rhode Island judiciary, we love you, Rajari, and wish you the very best.